Hello followers, this is John DeMocus, a.k.a. Half Man, Half Cichlid. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, canister filters uh, and also convince you that uh, for many of us that uh, canister filters, if not set up properly, become a uh, nitrate factory. Uh, you know, a little bit of history. Uh, I've probably badmouthed canister filters for a number of years because uh, I was focused on sumps. I put in a sump system for my 340 gallon, my 500 gallon, and I found them so superior to uh, canister filters that I was kind of turned off for a while on canisters. Uh, but I've realized over time and with uh, smaller aquariums that uh, they do in fact, can canister filters do in fact have their place. For example, in the 50 to 150 gallon uh, range. Now, if I was going to be successful with canisters, there were a couple of prerequisites that I set for myself. Uh, first of all, find a way that they would not be nitrate factories. And we'll talk about in this video how I did that. And the second thing was, given the uh, the work, the leakage and other problems with uh, handling and cleaning canister filters, I wanted to find a way where I would not have to, to dismantle and clean the uh, canister filter for at least uh, 10 to 12 months, which I've been able to do and we'll talk about. So my goals were to you know, put canister filters, make them work on three aquariums, 250 gallon, and also as a backup to my 200 gallon uh, to minimize the feces that got sucked into the, uh, the uh, canister filter, which create a couple problems that I'll talk about. I didn't want to have things like fine filter media, spun polyester, the Walmart stuff, for example, excuse me, knowing that it plugs pretty quickly, slows down the flow, and uh, results in more frequent cleaning of a canister filter. And lastly, I wanted to maximize the internal media volume of the canister relative to the size of aquarium I was putting a canister on, again, to extend the time between cleanings and to maximize the amount of biological activity in the filter. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video. I think it's got some uh, good information. I look forward to your comments and suggestions and uh, viewpoints. Thank you. Just as a side note, before I went with really big aquariums, my 340 and my 500 uh, canisters and hang on backs were what I used, which of course most of us uh, use today. And the reason I went to uh, sumps was I didn't want to have a setup like this uh, filtering uh, my 500 gallon aquarium. I promise you just a little bit of simple science before we get uh, started, but the uh, reason we, we filter is to, to remove our particulates, but more importantly, to uh, neutralize the byproducts of protein metabolism when our fish uh, eat protein and whatever food we provide to them. The uh, proteins, when they break down, can be uh, 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 fatal lethal to our aquarium fish. So we want to neutralize them and break them down into uh, nitrates and again keep the nitrates as uh, low as possible. Once these uh, proteins are consumed by our aquarium fish, the uh, metabolic waste containing these nit nitrogen compounds that again are uh, lethal if they accumulate uh, are released into the water through three biological uh, processes. There's the respiration process, the fish uh, produce urine, and lastly, the most visible and uh, solid waste 
is uh, the feces. So the the products of respiration in urine are basically liquids, and feces are uh, uh, fish feces, poop, whatever you want to call it, and they're solid waste. This slide is key. There are numerous sources for this information, but they all confirm and validate the fact that uh, fish feces are more than 15% protein on a dry weight basis. So the extent to which we can remove the feces from our aquarium uh, quickly, the less uh, uh, work is going to need to be done by the nitrogen cycle, the, neck, the fewer nitrates that uh, uh, will be uh, uh, produced. And we certainly don't want, uh, for this reason, the uh, feces to enter our canister filters and break down slowly over time and turning our canister filters into a, a uh, nitrate factory. So how do I get rid of the feces? Uh, frequently from my uh, aquariums with canister filters. All of my aquariums are uh, uh, do not have a substrate. And here's an example of a 50 gallon where I have the flow of the water such that the uh, theses all collect in the back corner of the aquarium. And then uh, once a, a week I, I siphon them out and uh, thereby uh, prevent them from getting sucked into the canister filter and the canister filter becoming a nitrate factory. So what are the methods we have as aquarists to uh, remove the feces with some frequency and thereby reduce their uh, ability to add to the load onto the nitrogen cycle and create a lot of nitrates? Of course, and they hang on back filter that will uh, uh, catch the feces. <clears throat> Polyfill is a, a pretty good place to put, uh, or excuse me, the hang on bag is a pretty good place to put the polyfill. Another method is using a, a uh, sponge filter on the intake to your canister filter to keep the feces from getting into your uh, canister filter. Another is to have substrate and uh, to vacuum clean uh, that substrate to uh, uh, remove the feces. And lastly, in the lower left corner, uh, the method that I showed you, no bottom uh, substrate uh, facilitating the uh, feces reaching a, a place in the aquarium where they're easy to pull out and uh, eliminate uh, them and to prevent them from adding to the load on the nitrogen cycle. So with the uh, fish feces being removed through other methods, which I just covered in the last slide, we have the canister filter uh, taking care of the liquefied uh, metabolic waste from our fish, from respiration, from their urine. And uh, what I do is I then pack my canister filters with the, the uh, best media possible. Now this uh, list here is from some scientific studies, the only scientific studies that I have found on the topic, and it, and it ranks uh, filter media based on their efficiency in uh, neutralizing uh, nitrogen waste. So what I what I do is I, uh, I try to use uh, uh, material that's at the uh, top of this list, again, to maximize the, uh, the uh, effectiveness of my canister filter in neutralizing uh, the remaining uh, nitrogen waste. So here is how I uh, stack and pack my Eheim uh, 2262. It's, it's, a, it's a large, very large, not the largest canister filter available, but I use uh, 20 and 30 uh, pores per square inch, 
Corette foam. And I also, uh, as you can see here, sandwiched between the uh, two porosities of foam, I have uh, pot scrubbies. And uh, I've, I've used this and, and have cleaned it a couple, well, uh, recently, and it had gone about 10 months before it uh, uh, started to, the water flow started to slow down. So you can see there's uh, no polyfill, no fine uh, media on here to catch the feces because the uh, feces are removed through other methods and there's no fine media to plug and slow down the flow and or force one to clean their canister filter more frequently. So bottom line, to extend the life of your canister filter between cleanings, keep the feces out of the canister. To keep your nitrates low, remove the feces from your aquarium through some other method and uh, clean those other methods uh, with some frequency so they do not add, they, so they do not break down over time and add nitrates to your aquarium. I would appreciate uh, your input, uh, your comments, and uh, any experience that uh, you might have. Thank you. Half man, half cichlid.